you are about to witness the most bizarre English vocabulary lesson you have ever seen. But I guarantee you will learn some fantastic vocabulary never taught in the classroom. Subscribe, like, and let's do this. I'm just gonna jump in the bar. Oh, oh, that's better. Though I have to say, I much prefer a shower in the morning. Problem is, I had a little accident. <gasps> I was taking a quick shower, realised I needed to shave my legs and armpits because lockdown, I hadn't done it in months and I was hairier than a yeti. <clears throat> well, I propped my leg up on the wall. Yes, even after two kids, I was still quite supple. So I'm standing one-legged, shaving my legs, I dropped the razor and lost my balance. I twisted my stupid ankle and I've been told to keep it elevated as much as possible, hence me taking a bath. Oh, by the way, I don't normally bathe fully clothed, no. I'm usually in the buff, starkers, as nature intended, in my birthday suit, you know, naked, but of course, <laughs> I can't be flashing all and sundry on my YouTube channel now, can I? It's funny how bath time has changed over the years. As a little kid, it was so much fun. I'd spend hours in the tub pretending to be a mermaid or creating strange concoctions from all the lotions and potions in the bathroom to present to my mother as a homemade perfume. Bless her. And then as an older child, when our family grew, I had to start sharing my bath. Now, we were a large family. I was one of seven children growing up. And as we were quite poor, we all had to share the bath water. Luckily, as the eldest child, I managed to get first dibs. Clean bath water for me. As an adult, I discovered the luxury of a hot bubble bath. Nice music, candles, radox, bliss. And what I liked the most was a chance to unwind and soak my aching muscles. Occasionally, I'd even have a drop of wine. Sometimes I'd stay in the bath for so long, my fingers would go all wrinkly. I'd look like an old prune. <laughs> Finally, I became a mother. And goodness, what a change. Luxury, down the plug hole. Candles, not very child friendly. Radox, no, my kids got sensitive skin. And relaxing music, not a chance. It's the mind numbing torture of baby shark on repeat in the background as I fight for position among my two children, praying that I escape bath time without being weed or pooed on. If I'm lucky, I might manage to squeeze in a cheeky morning bath for the purposes of teaching an English lesson. <sighs> Yay, they found me. <sighs> Coming. Okay, let's revisit and break down some of the things you just heard. First, I said, I'm just going to jump in the bath. I'm just going to jump in the bath. Now, going to is commonly shortened to gonna in spoken English, mostly in informal settings. Now, jump and hop are verbs we tend to use when talking about getting into the bath or shower. I'm just going to jump in the bath or... I'm just going to hop in the shower. Now, when I got into the bath, I said, ah, that's better. Though I have to say, I much prefer a shower in the morning. Oh, that's better. Though I have to say, I much prefer a shower in the morning. I have to say, this is a phrase we use when we are about to share an honest statement. In many cases, it's used when sharing something a little embarrassing, like, I enjoyed dinner, though I have to say, the meat was not cooked to my liking. Next, I said, problem is, I had a little accident yesterday. Problem is, I had a little accident. 
This sentence should have started with the. The problem is. But it's common for natives to drop the in the phrases the problem is or the thing is. If this phrase is at the beginning of the sentence. Problem is. Thing is. Now, when admitting that I needed to shave, I said I was hairier than a yeti. Now, a yeti is a myth. It's a large, hairy creature resembling a human or a bear. The next word mentioned was supple. This basically means flexible. Next, I said I was standing one-legged, shaving my leg. One-legged means on one leg, but pay close attention to the pronunciation. One-legged, not one-legged. One-legged, one-legged. Then I said, I twisted my stupid ankle. I twisted my stupid ankle. To twist your ankle, this is to hurt your ankle by rolling or twisting it, sometimes referred to as a sprained ankle. We sometimes add the adjective stupid to the receiving noun of the incident when we're frustrated with what happened. Oh, I hit my stupid head. Or oh, I cut my stupid finger. Or oh, I broke my stupid phone. Obviously, this is informal. Next, I said, I have to keep my ankle elevated. I've been told to keep it elevated as much as possible. This means lifted. You have to keep it high. Right, let's address the difference in pronunciation between bath and bathe. Bath, the noun, has a long vowel sound, whereas bathe, the verb, uses a diphthong. A, A, bath, bathe. I bathe in the bath. The following phrases are all slang for naked. In the buff, starkers, as nature intended, in my birthday suit. In the buff, starkers, as nature intended, in my birthday suit. They all mean naked. Then I said, I can't go flashing all and sundry. I can't be flashing all and sundry on my YouTube channel now, can I? To flash means to show your private parts quickly to someone who isn't expecting to see nudity. Someone who flashes on purpose because sometimes it happens by accident. Oh! Someone who flashes on purpose is called a flasher. The phrase all and sundry. This phrase means everyone. It's usually used when everyone is a negative amount of people. Oh, I'm fed up. I had to feed all and sundry this weekend. Now, I spoke about spending time in the tub. Tub is another word for bath. Some may say bathtub. It's not very common these days, but still in use. Not to be confused with hot tub, which is a hot bubbling tub you share with friends while drinking champagne or beer. I spoke about creating strange concoctions from all the lotions and potions in the bathroom. Creating strange concoctions from all the lotions and potions in the bathroom. Concoctions means something put together from several different things. Next, we come to eldest versus oldest. I said I'm the eldest. Both words mean having the greatest age within a group. The difference is eldest is used to mean having the greatest age within a related group of people, a family. I am the eldest child within my sibling group. Being the eldest meant I got first dibs. Luckily, as the eldest child, I managed to get first dibs. Okay, this means to get the first opportunity to do something. I had first dibs on the bath, meaning I was allowed to be in the bath first. Next, I talked about the things that made a bath luxurious, including Radox. Radox is a personal care brand which is known for relaxing bath salts and bubble bath products. Next, the word prune. A prune is a wrinkly fruit that we liken ourselves to when our fingers go wrinkly in the bath because we've been in there too long. 
Now the phrase down the plug hole is an idiom meaning something has failed or been lost or wasted. Luxury, down the plug hole. Now we talk about squeezing something into our schedule when we have to make room or time to do something. I said I managed to squeeze in a cheeky morning bath. I might manage to squeeze in a cheeky morning bath. We use cheeky in this context to suggest the thing I squeezed in was a guilty pleasure, something I shouldn't really have been doing or done. I may say I'm just having a cheeky beer after work or a cheeky cigarette break during working hours. In my case, it's usually a cheeky chocolate before dinner. Mm. 